Today on The Grave Talks, part three of our conversation about deliverance at Spring Hill Plantation with Eric and Cindy Davis. They were able to come in and do a cleansing of your house, a demonic cleansing of your house. And it did work, and then you had issues again, and they came back again. I don't know how long it's been, because it's pretty recent. It's not like this all happened in the early 2000s. This has happened recently in your lives. How does the house feel to you now? Uh, It ended. They did. The church came in. They, They said, could we come pray for you? And that's all they really said. They did not mention anything else. And I... I asked Cindy, and uh, she said, okay, they can come. At 3 o'clock, there comes this caravan of cars and trucks of people I didn't know. We gathered in a circle out in the driveway, and what I assumed was going to happen was they were going to pray for us, put their hands on us and pray for us, and we thought that was the end of it. But it didn't take but about Two minutes to realize this was this was bigger than that. There was two people, one was named Randy, one was named Kim, and they said, here's what's going to happen. We're going to have communion. We're going to pray for you, and me and Kim's going in that house, and we're going to drive those demonic spirits out of your house, and they will be gone today because that church— at church, at the church, we had, we'd only been to that church three three times, you know, three services. He told me that at that morning service, that God spoke to him. He said, you will go to their house this day, and you will drive them, out, drive them demons out of the house, for they will not spend another night in that house with them. He did not want to do it. I don't he, that he, would be kind of terrifying. Fear came over him. Yeah. Fear came over him. He, he, him and the Lord had like a out in the parking lot of the church. They had a, they had a chat out in the parking lot and but he knew it was something that had to happen. While we were in the prayer circle, before we started praying, we had communion. They brought communion. We had communion. I mean, senior really. I don't know if we was confused or what, because we didn't know what. We just thought they were going to come over and say, dear, dear Heavenly Father, please make them demons go away. No, it was, this, was, this, was, this was big time what they were planning on doing. And before we prayed, there was a woman who I'd never met in my life. Me and Cindy just standing there. She she just looked at me and she pointed at me and she had a fire in her eyes. She goes, she goes, before they even start, I know you have unforgiveness towards someone. And none of this that we're going to do today is going to work until we deal with it and we deal with it right now. And she said, who is it? My heart was about to explode, and I I knew I had to say it, but I pointed at Cindy. Mm. Uh, I I had unforgiveness toward her. All of this, all of these years of struggles, all of these years of our marriage, our marriage was a wreck. Uh, We hardly talked to each other. I think we loved each other, but I don't think we liked each other. And she pointed at me. She said, let's deal with it. So I asked Cindy to forgive me for for everything. And she said the same thing to Cindy. And Cindy put it right back at me. She pointed at me. And she said it. We hugged each other. There was a, there was a release of energy that I can't explain. It was like, it was almost like, okay, now it's time for war. Randy said, let's go. And him and him and Kim, Randy took off running. He didn't walk toward the house. He ran toward the house. And they were in the house. You've heard, you've heard in the Bible, and you've heard people say, in the name of Jesus, get out. Well, they wasn't saying Jesus. They were saying Yeshua. And Yeshua is the is the is the original name of Jesus. 
Our house is on 24 acres, but I promise you, they were so loud in there that the neighbors five, 600 yards away could hear it. And it was it was something else. I mean, I feel it. Uh, we felt them leave. It was like a rush of energy was going past us. And I was just in awe watching what was going on. Um, they went from, I call it the big house. That's our main plantation home. Then they went into the, the hospital, felt the same thing. You felt, I call it energy. I know it was a demonic spirit, but it felt like electricity was going past us when they left. Oh, that's interesting. Then, then the wildest thing that they told me afterwards, they went into my barn. There's always been something evil about that barn. I don't know what it was. The, the cats, our cats, after the 1800 gentleman experience, they never would go back close to that barn. They never, you couldn't go get them to go in that barn. Zoe, our little dog, would never get within 20 yards of that barn. Uh, they walked into the barn, and when they when they commanded the spirits to leave, the uh, it's tools. I got tools in there. You, you could picture wrenches and all the kind of stuff hanging on pegs. They said that the tools began to sway back and forth violently while they were in there. And she said it was like a, she said like there was a breeze blowing them back and forth, and they 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 said they never they never were they never wavered. I'm, I'm I'm really thankful that someone would come on a Sunday afternoon, come 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 to people they've never met before, and deal with a situation as wicked as this, not back down that. It was it was something to see. And it's just so interesting to me that of all the people you could have reached out to, you reached out to someone who could actually help you. That had to have been such an overwhelming feeling for both of you at that moment because not only did the Calvary show up because it's kind of like what happened. They all showed up to help you. But you also... With her insight about forgiveness, the two of you weren't necessarily on the same page. It brought you back together. I would imagine after they left, I would think I would have just collapsed <laughs> with all that emotion. And that had to have been we were, we were so exhausted. much. Yeah. We were exhausted. I'll tell you what, it was, we, we just went in and I, I can't, I can't describe the feeling in this house now. We've had, We've had the times where we would come and, and kind of do something similar as they were doing. And you would get this, you would get this, I guess what I call a break in the action, but never, never real peace. We get this kind of like a, you know, like, like it stopped for a little while. But you kind of knew, you kind of knew in your heart that it's it's not over. You knew it's not over. It's, it's, but this time, uh, it was different. It was like it was like an injection. Yeah. The whole house just oh man, that was the that was the sweetest night of sleep I've ever had in my life. How did you feel, Cindy? Did you feel a sense of relief and maybe a little hope mm-hmm. again? And yeah, how did that I make did. you feel? We could feel the peace, and that was just. You know, we hadn't experienced that since we've been in this house, and it was just joyous. <laughs> we were just beyond, what would you say? I don't know. There was such happy. a release of release of emotions, and I guess what you just said, uh, there was there was a feeling of hope. Yeah. Finally, was hope. We knew, we knew there was a God that was caring for us. We knew that there was events that had been, I guess, in the in the work for years. I don't I don't understand God's plans. I do not understand his timing sometimes because as as humans, we're in a world that wants stuff and we want it now mm-hmm. and we want it right now. Well, we wasn't getting now, but finally 
it's some like it culminated and now now it's it's happening there there is a holy war going on over here and the power the power of god it, it was like a lightning bolt i'm gonna tell you it was it was uh, I, I, I i'll never get over the feeling of, of experiencing that now from when this happened that day how long had you lived in that house that was I would say that was a, uh, that was in we we moved here in 2016 and this was probably I have to kind of go back and look but this would probably be around 20 this was in 21 uh, okay. a little bit into 21 so you'd been there quite a while and dealing with this you know like you said it would go away for a while but then it would come back so that's what makes me think too with you trying to do it yourself, then you get relaxed thinking it's gone and then it just comes back. It's almost like you needed someone else to come in and stand up to it. We found out after attending this church that we as people, people are not meant to be alone. People, people who are isolated uh, are going to struggle with things. They're going to struggle with loneliness. They're going to str- probably most most of them. They may not admit it, but they're probably going to struggle with depression. People need people, and God's people need God's people. Because uh, when we were weak, God brought in a group of people who were very strong, mm-hmm. and they they grabbed us up. And they surrounded us. They encircled us. And they, it didn't stop that day. They, you know, it wasn't like that day. Everything's over. There's no, no more thoughts about it. Uh, there was still, there was still, I guess, a, a little bit of an anxiety because after you've been going through something for this many years and seeing things come back. The, the feelings of them coming back and then how they would attack your mind they would attack your body they would they would they attacked our dog Zoe yeah. and uh it's you know so but it was it was so good that, that during that I guess that period after they came they they were they were with us we were getting text we were getting phone calls we were getting visits they never stopped. It wasn't like, okay, it's over. You're on your own. That never happened. And Because it, it goes from that, keeping this dark, literally, secret between you and your daughter. She was fully aware of it. She had experiences of her own in the house. But it's interesting that you do think the world's going to think I'm crazy, so I have to deal with this by myself, which is... To find a community that's like, you're not crazy, that we can help you with this and we care, that is huge to have that, that backup. Yeah, it was, and, and they're still, they're still with us. They're still right standing with us. To this day, there is a, you can tell that there is a want of the spirit to, to come back. There's a desire in there, but we've got a community and we've got a backing of people. And when we're, when we're weak and I have to admit, sometimes we feel that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, We can, we can, we can send a text or make a phone call. And it seems like within minutes, those feelings fade away because you know there's someone out there who's praying for you, mm-hmm. who's believing for you, who's battling on your behalf. And because the demonic spirits, they react to this. Now, I know, I know there's people that maybe feel other ways. There's other things you can do like sage and, and enchantments, all kind of stuff. And uh, but in our experience, it was the power of God. It was the blood of Jesus and his name 
and it ejected them out of this house. Now, I had a, two questions for you guys, sure. because after reading the book, I had to wonder, would you be where you are now in your relationship between Eric and Cindy? It seems like it's made you to a stronger couple that maybe you could have given up on this relationship. But because of what you've been through and you look at where you are now, it seems like it's brought you to a good place. Do you feel like that? Mm-hmm. I do. I can tell you, I can tell you for a fact, if we wouldn't have had this experience, I feel 100% we would have been divorced. I truly believe that because we were on a path even we were kind of on a path of, of trouble before all this started. Uh, I had I had some uh, anger issues, and I had some. I was just a selfish person when it come to marriage. I, I I just felt like a marriage was supposed to be the man ruled the husband. She did exactly what he said, and she should love him regardless. And that's it's, that was terribly wrong. It was uh, horribly wrong. And But when all this started, now we had to bind together, even mm-hmm. though in the middle of it, we were getting very weak, and we hardly spoke to each other. There was still something that kept us just holding on tight. It's kind of like you're in a you're in the middle of a storm and you're all by yourself, and the only person to hold on to was each other, and that's exactly what we did. We are stronger in our marriage than we've ever been. This is a story that I thought needed. I, I, it had to be told. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had to be told. Uh, I, I, I couldn't. That's the reason I wrote this book was because I know that we cannot be the only ones. Right. Uh, there's other people. Right. There, there's other people. We are not unique. Uh, we are not unique now. They may be, they may not be able to see what I saw or hear what we heard or have them talk to us. Irregardless, demonic spirits, unholy spirits are attacking people right this minute I'm hoping that this book at least will maybe open some people's eyes to maybe see say oh wow that's happening to me after reading the book maybe I can reach out reach out and get the help that we need whether it's whether it's from your from a church family or counseling and and we did a lot of things and we, we are stronger. Uh, I tell you what, there's nothing. We are inseparable right now. No, that touches my heart. Experience. The other question I had, because the first way I wrote the question down was, do you think this was a test of your faith? But then the more I got to thinking about it, it almost is, is more like this experience brought you to your faith in a way you know, because it, in a dark way, but it really did lead you to a very strong faith. Do you do you feel like that? Yes, I sure do. I have more I have more confidence, more faith uh, in, in 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 God than I've ever had in my whole life. Uh, I don't. I can't say it was a test of our faith. Because I believe that my my behavior, as far as with unforgiveness, anger, mm. uh, and a lot of the things that we both did, Cindy included, uh, opened up doors. And demonic spirits enter open doors. Once they're in, it's not the easiest thing to do to get them out until you get that revelation that we 
eventually finally got. Yeah, it, it took a long time to get it. But now that we've got it, uh, it it'll never be taken taken away from us. Uh, and, and I, my, my, I guess my, everybody's got a purpose. God, God puts a purpose in everybody, and I believe our purpose. And we're the last people on earth to to do something like this because we're both very private people. We do not. We don't go out with friends a lot. We, we do have a small group at our church that we like to do every week. But as far as going out on Friday night, hanging out with folks, we don't do that. We stay here and enjoy, enjoy each other. So this is, this, is, this is not something that's in our, in our DNA, but this story's got to be told. And I don't believe God, God would not leave me alone until I finished it because after eight months of when I told you writing the stories, I looked at the, all those eight months of stories and I said, wow, this looks like a book. And it was never intended to be a book. It was just me journaling, like what you say, writing stories. Uh, but it, it ended up being a book. I contacted a publisher. I didn't even think it was I didn't think they would even want, have anything to do with it, but they they wanted it, and they we worked together to finish it. Well, I thought after I finished the book, I was like, it is so appropriately named Deliverance at Spring Hill Plantation because that's exactly what happened. And I thought, ah, oh, what a perfect name for that book. I'm really happy for where you're at now. I'm sorry about what you had to go through to get there, but I'm happy that you're both in a good place. And now I downloaded the book on my Kindle on Amazon. Is that the best place for people to get the book? Yes, Amazon Kindle is currently, Amazon and Kindle is probably your best bet right now. You can go to uh, my website that we've created if you want to. We'll be happy to give a signed copy of the book, oh. but you have to go to the website, uh, springhillbook.com, and you can do just the top where it says order, not, not from Amazon or Kindle, just order now. And you buy it directly from me. I will be glad to sign the copy. Otherwise, Amazon and Kindle is your best bet. It is currently in the works to be in a in a lot of places. Uh, we have we have the book is being promoted by a company out in Dallas, and they are they are creating a lot of social media stuff. And think about it: is people people will be able to get it in any any. A lot of different outlets. Audible is coming in the next few weeks. We'll have it in Audible. It'll be released in Audible, and that'll all be be out there. So, but right now, in for us this minute, Amazon and Kindle is your best bet. I will put a link wherever people are listening right now in the show notes. I'll put a link to that website. Oh, cool. I don't know how it works, but sometimes if you buy directly through the website. You know, Amazon doesn't keep a big old chunk of it that way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'll put a link to that. You can buy it on Amazon, but the link will take them right there. And they can order it through you and yeah, get, that, will, get that autograph the copy. Website takes it. The website will take you. You got three You got three choices. Buy it direct from me. Fill out a form. I'll, I'll mail it to you. We'll sign the copy. Uh, or, or you can click Amazon or Kindle right off my website. It'll take you right right to Amazon to, to go, go that route. Well, thank you so much for taking all this time to chat with me. It was such an interesting conversation. And after the, reading the book, I was so excited to get to talk to you about it. So thank you very much for oh, this. Uh, we, we appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. I want to thank your podcast for, for having us. It's, it sure was a blessing to be able to, to talk with you today. And that wraps up our conversation with Eric and Cindy Davis about their new book, Deliverance at Spring Hill Plantation. You can buy the book on Amazon or go to their website, springhillbook.com. 
If you'd like access to all of our episodes, including the archive and advanced episodes, everything commercial free, become a gravekeeper. You can sign up on Apple Podcasts where you can try it for three days free, or you could also go to patreon.com slash the grave talks. I'm Carol Hughes, and for all of us here at the Grave Talks, thank you so much for listening. Thank you.